you're now a European Union decision maker from the 300 billion euros, uh, which is going into the global gateway. You can now freely pick 1 billion to invest in Central Asia uh, to promote the values that Alina is just talking about. Where does it go? Thank you very much. Excellent questions, both of you. Uh, before I answer, I, I, I want to give you this story, which I really, really like. Um, so there was a storm, right, uh, um, in the sea. And then after the storm, one young girl, she was actually walking down the beach. And then she was collecting the fish and throwing it back into the sea. But the, uh, there's like millions of fish in, uh, on the beach. And then one man approached the girl and asked, uh, what are you doing? What, uh, what's the point? You cannot save them all. And she said, it, there is a point for those fish I saved. Right, and I think the European Union contribution to Central Asian region is enormous. Right, it may not be visible, you know, uh, always, but whatever they are doing, people know that. I was part of the expedition from uh, from the mountains to the Aral Sea, so we drove across those distant territories and the regions. And in some of the villages up there in the mountains, you could see like a village for. 45, 47 people, and some of them, they had, uh, you know, solar rooftop panels, you know, installed, which provided them with electricity and perhaps some sort of heating. And when I asked, they said, that was a German foundation, that was kind of European Union, that was the OSCE engagement in there, right? So people know, for them, it matters and it's very important. And I was also thinking about when Alina mentioned that, you know, there are some areas where China and Russia are very active, so for European Union, it would be very difficult to compete. Definitely. Infrastructure, road infrastructure could be one of this. But everyone is looking at the road infrastructure as a huge project, right? So kind of trans-regional trans, uh, roads or even inside the country, but hundreds of kilometers long. Yes, China is the one building those roads. However, smaller roads connecting villages to this main road are still in a terrible condition. Right? And for people, it is important if those roads, smaller ones, linking their, their homes to the main infrastructure from which they can benefit you know, uh, 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 is priority. And who is going to deal with this? Of course, that's the responsibility of the local government, but they don't always have either resources or the will to do this. Russians, Chinese will do that? Definitely not. So perhaps European Union, with its, with its local but integrated approach in the region could be of utmost important importance. Um, another issue, kind of, you know, this is something that helps the region, helps the people, and trust me, people in Central Asia, they know this, they appreciate it very much. Uh, if European Union wants to enhance its visibility, there is no other choice but to engage in the similar projects as the Russians and Chinese do, right? Many say that the EU or the West is losing this competition. It's not losing. It, it is there, but it's present in different sectors which are less visible. So you want to be more visible? Security, military, defense, or even large infrastructure is something that you have to be part of. It doesn't mean that you're going to replace Chinese investment or the Russian uh, you know, money being channeled to the region, but you're going to be part of this kind of more regional dynamics. And in my personal opinion, if I had this 1 billion uh, US dollars, going back to your question, since I work on energy, that's going to be definitely energy sector. Energy sector, but, uh, you know, disintegrated, autonomous uh, energy system to be installed. I would really love to see this in Central Asia, like the European countries have right now, right? Because all this... Uh, solar power plants and the windmills being installed in the country, they're all linked to the central grid. And they're being built by, let's say, Chinese or the Russian investment in the oil and gas. But to what extent it really contributes to the energy security of the people who are the most in need of this? I'm not sure about that. But if the European Union can cha channel this money to build autonomous, disintegrated systems, for a particular small population centers um, throughout the region, and then I'm pretty sure it's going to be a huge contribution to the local development. To summarize in one sentence, the European Union should invest in the energy to secure, according to you, into the energy security of the five Central Asian countries, and also simultaneously gain on its own energy security. All oh, right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>